All right, so you want to turn the controller on to start a game. It'll ask you if you want to resume the prior game. You will want to answer no, right here where it says clear no. It'll ask you if 6601 is the correct code, and it is standard football. That is the correct code. You will answer yes. Broadcast and channels, always accept them. Always hit the yes button, and it will automatically take you to a blank scoreboard with an eight-minute quarter already set up for you. At that point, you're ready to start the game. When the game starts, I find it easiest to run the clock operation off this small handheld. It allows me to swing my head around without having to find these two buttons over here. You can operate it here or start stop on here. So if you start the game clock, the game clock starts clicking down on your, on your board and you just have to watch the referee of when to stop the ball, the ball or the clock. When he blows his whistle as the athlete runs out of bounds or gets tackled or whatever happens on the field. So let's say we're not paying close attention and the clock keeps running and the visiting coach is yelling and everybody's telling you to reset the game clock that you should have stopped it 10 seconds quicker. All you have to do is go to set main clock. It's in the bottom right corner. And let's say they're telling you to set it for seven minutes and 40 seconds. Set main clock, seven, four, zero. The important part is to add one more zero because the scoreboard does tenths of a second. And then hit enter to accept that time. And it will automatically take you back to 740, which is what the referee asked you to set it for. And you are then ready to resume play by starting and stopping the clock. Let's hope that your home team scores. You can see the home designation for the scoreboard is in green. The guest is in orange. Um, there are all the simple things that happen in a football game. Plus six for a touchdown. Plus two for if you guys kick a field goal. Plus three if they would actually kick a legitimate field goal, not scoring a touchdown. Or plus one, which for you guys is running in the ball from the PAT line. Um, or passing the ball in from the PAT line. So any of those things can be done. And you, you scored a touchdown and they ran the ball in because there's not many field goal kickers in second and third grade. So they scored seven points, actually. And let's say you added that a little quick and the referee said, no, that was no good. They have an argument or they have a conversation on the field. They take the point away. There is a minus button right here, right beside the plus one. You can adjust the score by single digits all day long if you have to. The other team scores, it's all the same here. If you have the plus six, plus three, plus two, plus one, and minus one. Um, the next thing to do is probably the advancement of a quarter as a game goes. So I'm going to reset the main clock so that the clock ends for you guys. Set main clock, and I'm going to go to 10 seconds because I don't want to take a lot of time here. And I'm going to tell the clock to run down. So we're going to wait 10 seconds here. The clock will go to zero. And ding, the clock goes to zero. The buzzer on the scoreboard is not working, but the time is out. Um, all you do is there's a button right here. It says quarter plus one. Go to the next quarter. And it knows that. And then set your main clock back at your quarter destination. At whatever your quarters are supposed to be. For most of junior football, it is an eight minute quarter. And now then the score is the same, everything's the same, and you're back at an eight minute quarter, it's on second quarter. Um, the other thing, and we can start the clock right back up again, not a problem. Um, the other thing to do would be timeouts. As far as the, to da the down markers and all that stuff, I don't think I'd worry about any of that, but timeouts usually kind of get important. So we stop the play. Let's say that Johnny ran out of bounds and the team wants a timeout. So we're going to hit timeout, and it's going to say that you have three, and that's fine. You hit enter, yes, and it's going to actually give you a one-minute timeout clock running. And it's also shown on the scoreboard, and it uses one of your timeouts for you. 
Um, that one was billed to the home team, the Wildcats. So when that runs out, and let's say they don't use the whole minute and they run back on the field on you, they're ready to start play. They tell you to wind the clock. You just hit your button to clock start and your regular clock takes back over. If the time ends, which is usually what happens, people take too long, and all you have to do is hit clock start and your regular clock will take back over. And that's all you have to do to advance through. Let's say this game ends and the Wildcats won six to nothing and it actually reads fourth quarter up there, but the game is over. The easiest way to get back to the start of a new game is to simply reach back here and shut the controller back off. And it'll that way you don't have to clear out scores, timeouts, all that stuff. Let's get back to the basic game. We're back to the start screen again. It asks you previous code 601 resume game. We don't want to resume the game because we're starting a new game. So we'll tell it no. It says select the code 6601. That is correct. We will hit yes. We will hit yes to accept the broadcast and channel. And we are back to a blank scoreboard with an eight-minute quarter.